Hi grade 12s, we're about to write the life sciences pet tomorrow. I thought I'd come online and probably it's the microphone, I think I am. Oh, God. Okay, right. The birds making a noise. It's freezing, as you know. Winter is, is back. And you're all writing LO as I talk to you. I hope it's going well. So pets are reasonably easy to do if you know what you're doing. Um, it's also something that people think, oh, I'll just do what I do and it's fine. And I don't have to worry about it too much. But actually, at the end of your final, the whole final is out of 350 marks. And this is 50 of your 350 marks. So if you do well in it, this bird can shut up. I hope you can all hear me. Um, if you get a good mark out of 50, you're already well on your way to a good mark for life science. So it's not something that you should be ignoring. Um, okay, just a few tips that I think will help you um, with your practical. Firstly, you want to use this 10 minutes reading time well. Um, I know you all sit there and go, oh, let's just start this prac, but actually you can use those 10 minutes well. So first you want to read the instruction sheet well. You want to understand it because especially with results, guys, sometimes a negative result can mean a positive thing and vice versa. So you've got to be careful, you've got to be aware of what what the prac that you're doing is testing. So if you have no, what was it last year? No color change, it meant that it worked. And if you had a color change, it meant that it didn't work. So you have to think about things like that, okay, when you're doing, when you're in your reading time, not afterwards, in your reading time. The second thing I want you to do in that reading time, I want you to find the aim. Okay, if you find the aim of the experiment, you're already finding the independent variable and the dependent variable. We'll discuss dependent variable in a second because there can be some um, problems with that. So I need you to be able to find the independent variable and the dependent variable. Okay, and then obviously read through the whole thing, see the experimental design if it's very different, um, and just be prepared because even though prax shouldn't take so long, when you are in the final and you are in a panic, all of a sudden everything takes very long. Okay, just do the prac like you would have done a normal prac. You'll be fine. Um, right, once you start doing the prac, if your syringe or your something is faulty and or your pipette or whatever doesn't work. Don't panic. Your teacher can give you another one. We have extra equipment, okay? So just use, you know, don't be shy to ask someone to say that, look, the syringe is not sucking up anything, or I don't know, my measuring cylinder doesn't actually have proper lines, I can't read it, or my or my thermometer, I can't read my thermometer properly. Please can you um please can I change it? Okay, so you've got you can't be expected to prac with faulty equipment. It's fine, your teacher will help you with that. Okay, or whoever's in, in invigilating. Right, okay, so you, my next suggestion is as you do each thing, you you read the instruction, you do it, you read it again, and then you tick it off to make sure that you are fine, you haven't left anything out. If they're talking about beakers, don't use measuring cylinders. If they're talking about measuring cylinders, don't use beakers. Make sure you're using the correct apparatus. And then you're obviously going to have to do some table, I mean, at least change this year completely differently. But generally, you'll do a table. Tables always have to have a heading. When you're doing a heading, you want to relate the independent and the dependent variable. You don't want to just say this versus that. That's a science thing. You want to actually show some kind of relationship between the two. And then, of course, your column headings are important. Independent variable in the first column and then the rest afterwards. And no units in the body of the table. Now, sometimes you might have a color change. You've got to check what they're asking. Read. It's actually it's an it's a exercise in reading properly. So... Are they asking for final color? Are they asking for color change? Just make sure that your table, your headings, and everything you've done, you're actually doing what they've asked you, okay? A bit of highlighting here and they won't kill you. Okay, so then you have your results and you have to conclude from your results, I'll get you, okay? A conclusion has to be quite comprehensive. You can't tell me beaker A, beaker A turned yellow, and therefore it has glucose. I don't know. I mean, that's not true, but I'm just trying to give you an example. What's beaker A? Solution A. P person's, person A's blood. Person A's saliva. I don't know. Person A's saliva turned yellow and therefore does have glucose. Therefore, what does it mean? Because maybe it's a, it's a prac about diabetes. Then they for, therefore they have diabetes because it has, it has it's changed color. So a conclusion has to be comprehensive. Say the sample, say what the result is, and say what it means. Okay. Um, 
Right, then we talk about independent, dependent variables. So independent is really quite easy. It's what have you changed? If you've got 10 test tubes, what have you done differently in each test tube? If you have, I don't know, three beakers, what have you done differently? It's what you have manipulated that you have made different in each of those, whereas the dependent variable is what you've measured. Did you measure the final temperature? Did you measure the final color? Did you measure, I don't know, what, what did you observe? Did you measure number of bubbles? I have no idea, okay? But basically, what have you measured? What did you do a measurement of? That is your dependent variable. And a controlled or fixed variable is, if you look at your experiment, what has been the same in all of them? Maybe the volume has been the same in all of them. All of them had 40 mils. Maybe the, maybe the concentration was the same. Maybe you left it for the same amount of time. Maybe you put it into the same water bath at the same temperature. Those are your controlled variables. So look at them and say, what have I done exactly the same for all of them? So that would be, so if you had to do a control variable, there are three things you always need to say. Number one, you will say what it is. So let's say the amount of time that it was left for. That's your generalization of, the, of it. Then you would talk about how much time. There will be 10 minutes and how do you measure it? Measure it with a stopwatch. Or you put 40 mils into each thing. Each, so the volume of each test tube, 40, how much was it? 40 mils. And how do you measure it either with a measuring cylinder or a syringe, depending what apparatus you have. Okay. Um, and then you're obviously going to answer some questions and you might have to do some graphs. Guys, you have to have a heading for everything, whether it's a graph or a diagram or a table or unless it says no heading required, you put a heading. Just it's a 30 second or a 15 second event. And then at least you know that you have got you, you'll get that mark. OK, don't don't ignore biological drawing skills. OK, and there have been years that there have been biological drawings. Who knows? Don't ignore magnification. Make sure you can do a magnification question. They're all on my YouTube channel. Make sure you can do a scale. You can cut. There's two things with scale. Either you can use a scale to work out the actual size or you can convert the scale to a magnification. Those are all there. I'm not doing it with you now, but you can do all of those. So that's also a nice thing to just check out. Um, but be able to do them and remember you have to always you have to always do the equation you have to do the equation so don't leave those things out okay right and then you might have to be asked how you work carefully so when you work carefully you want to make sure that your measuring is correct so for a syringe you must look at eye level and make sure there are no bubbles you want to make sure if you're measuring in a spoon that you overfill it and you flatten it so it's the exact volume if you are using lots of different things then preventing cross-contamination if you've got like a, a stirring stick you'll have to wash it in between or you might have different things that might be spilling over just wash things in between that prevents, prevents cross-contamination and of course you might have to um, ask how you can improve the design of an experiment and how you would do that mostly would be if you can repeat it you repeat it because if the results are the same every time then you know it's a good experiment then you know the results are reliable um, another thing is to make it a bit how can you improve the design then you could also if you have independent variables and you're saying for example the concentrations are 0 50 100 then you can make a wider range of independent variables so you can do instead of 0 50 100 you can do 0 25 50 75 100 because then you're getting the in-between values that'll also improve the design and of course you can improve a design i'm speaking very fast by um by having better measuring bit of an iffy one but if you are measuring something and it's not being measured very well and you know you're not actually measuring accurately if you find a better way to measure it that will improve the design of the experiment so maybe you do the mass of it rather than the volume if it's a something that you're not really getting the volume very well done so that's something to think about um and then yeah so then i think that's pretty much it i mean obviously you're gonna get asked other questions you're gonna have to analyze data you might get things to analyze you will get things to analyze then you just have to actually read and just make sure you understand what's being asked. And then, of course, you get onto the experimental design. I've got a very nice uh, one on YouTube with my cat who keeps making an appearance. Apparently, people think I'm a bit abusive when I push her off, but cats are cats. And those of you who have cats understand, you just push them off and it's all fine. Okay? But your experimental design, just make sure you know what your independent, dependent variable is. What are you, what are you changing? Make sure you understand that. What are you measuring and make sure everything else stays constant when you're doing the design i suggest that you take a few minutes and you draw a little picture okay i need three test tubes in those test tubes i'm going to put i don't know four moles of of solution x i'm then going to put eight moles of another solution and so on and so forth okay then maybe you need to leave it or put it into a water bath or do whatever you need to do 
okay and then say what results you're going to what results you're going to uh, measure and that you're going to put them in a table every single in point needs to have one instruction only it needs to have what you're going to do how much are you going to do and what equipment you're going to do with it so those three things have to be in every single point of your of your experimental design okay um so uh let me just think of something else yeah so you say add 10 mils of solution x to each test tube using a 10 mil syringe okay and so like that's pretty much all you do if you do that and at the end of it you say something along the lines of um observe the color change observe the number of bubbles observe the size of the potato and put those observations or put those results in a table and of course you want to repeat the experiment just because it's always good to repeat an experiment and then you're going to be great okay watch your time make sure you understand the information sheet make sure you understand what the results are and what they mean before you even start the experiment otherwise you might confuse yourselves okay oh hypothesis and aim a quick one okay so if you are con if you are looking for hypothesis it's literally a statement that you can prove or disprove what you think is going to happen don't just educated guess nonsense i don't like the word guess okay so you could say that um when a person i don't know um if a person has diabetes they will no yeah people who have diabetes will have glucose in the urine that is detected using a i don't know a glucose strip and i, I don't know but it's a something you can test okay um and aim is to determine and you just rearrange the words and it's exactly the same and then of course it's aim and hypothesis and there's one other thing i want to say oh well i'm old i've forgotten okay i'll put it into, i'll put it to the comments if i ever remember okay but you guys are going to be great don't panic about it but don't also ignore it because it's a good way of getting some excellent marks and i wish you all the best good luck and goodbye